Cool. Looks like it's good. Sounds good. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Good. Um, so release governance. Um, I guess the first thing to mention here is that um, secrets management was originally a part of this category, but uh, has now spun out into its own. Uh, we've done secrets management as a separate deep dive, so I won't recover anything there. Um, but the overall goal of the release governance category was is to um, kind of track and um, uh, make it possible to do an audit of a release after the fact without um, uh, without having to add a bunch of process or manual steps for collecting information. So you'll see the themes of some of the the things that are included here. It's like automatic collection of different things, this dashboard for different things, but it's all related to compliance and security evidence collected during a release and locking things down so that you can't um, do things in a way that it's not tracked. Um, that's kind of the overall bit here. Uh, chain of custody is an important bit. Um, uh, and again, I, 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 this kind of just repeats the same things, but like trying to not do this through manual controls, like not adding manual steps or approval processes, but building those into the pipeline and doing it in a continuous delivery way first. Um, although kind of similar to what we talked about, I think when we were talking about secrets management is, or release orchestration is, um, in some cases we will provide support for manual processes and things like that that are important and there's no workaround for, but we'll always try to do the, um, give those teams a path to do something automated uh, and better first. Um, so just like uh, normal, there's the issue list. Um, this links to the overall vision, um, which is just the release stage page. Uh, and then there's the re same UX research issue. Uh, there's only 11 items open here. So this is a good one that you can read through and actually just kind of understand every single issue in the entire backlog for release governance. Um, there's a few themes here, blackout periods for environments, um, a two-factor authentication step between commit and deploy. Um, so this is kind of like an approval, but it's a, um, it's a uh, more automated way of doing an approval and just controlling a two-factor auth step there. Um, binary authorization is an interesting one. So there's a Google, uh, right now it's a Google Cloud only feature where you can uh, make it so that a deployment can't happen unless the Docker container has been signed in a certain way by the CI system. Uh, we were looking into implementing this a while back, but the problem is, is that um, it's only available on Google uh, and it's not a standard feature of Kubernetes. It's not a standard feature really of anything yet. Um, and so it only recently came out of, came out of beta with Google. So um, we haven't really found a customer who's excited to adopt it. It's a nice sounding feature though. And if it ever became more generally available, uh, I think it would be something that we'd want to prioritize. But until more people can actually use it, I don't know that, um, that it's, a, it's really a priority. But if you did find a customer who was like, yes, I want binary authorization, it might be cool to build uh, together with them. We did do a POC and got mo most of the way there. Um, there's some still, still a bit of work to do, but we have a pretty good understanding of what it is. Um, prevent deleting protected environments, user access policy for environments, um, create a change request ticket in service now, Evidence collection for releases is kind of a big thing, but we'll start somewhere. That, that'll be an issue that we open. Um, and then waiting for MR approval and CI pipeline jobs. Which is actually um, something we're, um, we're going to break down iteratively and deliver um, a piece in 12.2. So that's, that's uh, being decision today. OK. Um, one thing to be careful uh, when we're breaking things down is make sure that they're valuable at each step of the way. Uh, it's easy to break it down um, and, you know, deliver it over three months, but it doesn't work until the third month. Um, so uh, I, I don't know how the team is proposing breaking it down, but this is a fairly atomic thing, and we just want to make sure that, um, that, 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 it, that it works at each step of the way. Yep, I'm pu I push back on that, and um, I'll see what the results are, and then we'll go from there. But I agree, um, it has to be valuable. Yep, and usually there's another way to slice things so that, it somehow does work. Yep, I don't want to um, do scrum fall. Yep, <laughs> uh, and then the binary authorization POC issue is here. Um, this would probably be close. Oh, it's it's being finished in twelve point one. Yeah, Vlad was working on it, and he's just wrapping up the write up. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is one of those ones that's been around forever. Yep. Okay. Um, 
So that's actually the entire backlog for this. Most of the really interesting things here, well, I'm not going to, I won't, uh, we'll come back to that. I don't want to preview too much. Um, there's also the public epic where I've never seen anybody comment, but um, yeah, nobody's commented in this one. But in theory, this is the discussion place for this page. Um, so um, it's just something to be aware of. But I've, had, I've never actually seen anybody use one of these for, for, for the purpose, the stated purpose. Um, so then we come into what's next and why. Um, up next is the approvals for the release pipeline. Uh, and then we list a few reasons why they're here, why this is the most important. Um, it's a um, important security control uh, for teams to make sure that changes aren't being made to production without the appropriate approvals in place. Um, we get a lot of requests. This is the classic one where we get the request over and over again from customers to do a manual approval step that requires like a VP or somebody to click a button on their phone and then only then the deploy will go. Um, but um, we don't want to start there because it's sort of a trap and it locks you into this op local optimization that um, uh, it's hard to get out of once you have a process like that in place at a company. Um, so what we're doing instead is using the merge request approval workflow and saying that, uh, giving people the ability to say that a, um, a deployment won't proceed past a certain point without an approved merge request. Um, so we'll wait on that merge request to be approved. And then you can use the merge request approval workflow to make sure that the appropriate people are applying the appropriate approvals. Um, and so it works much nicer within the whole GitLab ecosystem. Um, there may still be some users who need uh, the uh, manual approval process or something else, like, or maybe the two-factor authentication one where they um, want to enter a code from their phone or something like that. Um, but those are sort of separate issues, and those aren't the right places to start, I don't think, in comparison with this kind of feature, which can help more teams and also help give them a path um, that, yeah, you, you, I, we understand you need approvals, and that's the way your process works, but let us help you you know, build your processes in a way that you're going to be as successful as possible with GitLab. Um, there's also a maturity plan here, although um, this category is at the planned level. So all we're bringing it to is available. Um, uh, I think that's actually incorrect, I should say available. Um, in order to do that, we have waiting for approvals in the pipeline and then evidence collection, um, whatever that MVC ends up being for that. Uh, once we have those two features, we can legitimately say we have some release governance features in the product and that it's, um, it's there and you can start using it. It may not be lovable yet, but, um, but there's something that you can play with and learn from. Um, let's take a look at the evidence collection MVC one. Um, this ties into that change dashboard issue that was opened. It seems uh, almost duplicative. So that's what that was it is almost, but I think, um, yeah, I mean, the, the other issue came from conversations at a conference with the CEO, so it's just sort of had its own life. But yeah, I mean, I think it's essentially the same thing. So um, maybe I, I connect those two and then bring in some of the content from that change log. Yeah. Uh, which I already did when that other issue was created, so that uh, you will see it's like it's linked here. Okay. Uh, some comments and, and linking it back and forth. Um, the one thing that that change dashboard potentially has more is just um, like changes that are happening within GitLab broader than the change process. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I do think uh, that this is actually most of that issue. Um, and then there's a few, there's a problem, there's a good problem to solve statement here, um, but there's not a lot in terms of proposal. Um, it's talking about that we're gonna have a new kind of thing that we can collect that's tied to a release, um, but we need to pick uh, what a couple things that we're going to start adding to this um, and so this one needs to be fleshed out a bit more um, yeah what I'm thinking is is like taking that change log input taking this input and then saying okay what is the first iteration of that um, sort of dashboard or log view <clears throat> yeah. and then building on that and, ex and measuring it and then building it and refining it exactly Exactly. So th this is a great one. Uh, and there's really good, there's some additional ideas of things to collect in the other issue. Um, so yeah, it's nice. Um, uh, the other thing is that if we had, this had planned to be coming after the milestone was connected. So you would have been able to collect um, like what issues were in the release, although that now that's not possible. Um, but someday you will be able to do that. Question. Um... How are we connecting these dependencies? 
Which dependencies? So like when we're talking about associating milestones to release as being a, a position, a, a piece, you know, a piece mm -hmm. of this, how do we, is it we just refer to them or is there a way to tie them dependent or inter, inter, interlocking in a better way? Well, the, it's not strictly dependent on it. Uh, you just right. lose access to a whole bunch of information. Okay. Uh, you can do them out of order. You're not blocked on not having the milestone. Yeah. But a lot of really interesting information only comes by way of the milestone. Um, so information about what, um, yeah, what really all, anything that's about what changed in the release would only yeah. be. Yeah, I'm just, I, I think maybe we can tie it better together in the vision then. They're independent, yeah. but there's a collective thought there. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and that's, uh, it should be sort of the case, hopefully with everything where it all sort of works together in a nice way. And, and um, new features that you add don't just do the one thing that they do, but somehow make the whole the whole better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we can say that more clearly in some way. Link issues better. Like I don't even think this links to that one. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, but yeah. Um, one other thought is, um, I to me this is really straightforward. The the beginning stages of this. Yeah. Um, I think that there is when we think about six milestones out, you know, plus, there's a whole lot of um, awesomeness and lovableness in here that, you know, we haven't touched on. So that's exciting, you know, knowing that there's still more beyond this and it's just getting us to that viable or available piece. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I'm thinking about is as we look at splitting up release a little bit, um, and even working over across with um, manage on the audit piece, um, there's an opportunity to keep the roadmaps cohesive or telling a story. And I don't know if that's something that's new, a new challenge for us at GitLab or if that's something um, that we already kind of thought through and we're working on. Uh, we have use cases which are meant to tie together. Um, actually, we, we call them something else now. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, Josh had put something there. Yeah, I think they're called application types now. Okay. okay. And although uh, the name sounds a little funny, I'm not really sure that that's what that means. Um, I, actually, I do think it is this. Uh, but there could be something here that's like um, auditor, maybe it's a persona. An yeah, auditor it's basically person. kind of tying that value stream together. And tie all of that together, yeah, exactly. All right. And this is a place for that. Okay, got it. Uh, and then you could link to it up here in the description and say like, release governance plays an important part in, you know, the auditor persona that we're working on here. Um, like I have a couple categories that are part of the mobile use case or uh, whatever we're calling it now, so I already forgot. Um, the CI it was CICD mobile capability. Yeah, there's a mobile, there's a mobile specific one um, application type, a mobile application type that um, bridges a couple and has a story there that ties it together. Yeah. Um, can we go to the issues? Uh, did we look at the issues list on this one? We did, yes. It's okay. Um, one other thing I was going to say here on the um, evidence collection one is, um, so right now this is just kind of an open-ended initial MVC and it has some different ideas in it. And this also has uh, some different ideas in it. What should probably happen after we pick the MVC is each of these different ideas of something to track should end up in an individual issue um, that can then be prioritized relative to each other and scheduled out. Yeah, that's right. That's probably a good, good call out. Um, and then I also think that there's an opportunity um, do we have any customer references in here? Um, we have one customer. Yeah, uh, it's the approvals thing. Uh, that is a super, super popular customer issue. Yeah, but like, if, do you, is it common to add, well, I guess we don't want to put customer videos or customer notes because that's not very private. I can't no, but we can talk about uh, general. Uh, general use cases? Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, like maybe, maybe talking about the personas, 
that this expands on. Yeah. No, yeah, normally you can just talk about the value of a thing mm -hmm. um, as a proxy for the customer, although sometimes it is interesting to talk about a specific use case um, that's associated with a specific customer. Um, mm -hmm. But then we just talk about it in sort of a general sense, like there's this general scenario where this could help in some specific way. Yeah, and, and, and I wouldn't even say that like I'm focusing on trying to bring it into one customer, but like string the idea into a summary of the customer feedback value. Um, and for uh, yeah. Just a, a little bit more um, definitive in discussing it. Yeah, there's also a um, an ask to make these more narrative driven and kind of telling a story throughout each of these steps, whereas right now they're more boxes to tick. Um, there was a, um, if I go over to my MRs, this, these new sections, yep. uh, where are we headed and what we're not doing, yep. um, which can potentially help. Uh, tell that story. Tell that story, yeah. And you can be talking about your users here. Uh, you're free to add those in this pass. I'm not pushing anybody to add them in this pass because I know everybody's busy doing their first or second releases. Um, but um, you could, if, if, when you're doing your edit for this month, you could, in theory, add those if it helps you tell that story. Yep. One question I had, I want to go to, I want to touch on the service now piece. Yeah. Where yeah. Is? That's another popular customer one here. <sighs> CS team frequently sees requests for integration with service now for change management built into C pipelines. And this is in particular a um, kind of enterprise one. Uh, a lot of enterprises are using service now for change control. Yeah. where a ticket gets created and approved. Um, so uh, this would be, uh, for now, this issue is just a one-way thing where GitLab, we can have a way to automatically create a change request ticket in ServiceNow. Um, we could do this through like a keyword, but probably the, the MVC for this is just writing up some documentation um, that is if you want to have a job that creates an event in ServiceNow, this is how you'd write it. And you use like a, a, the ServiceNow API to just use a curl command and call out to it or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then we've documented how you can create change events in ServiceNow from GitLab. We can build something more interesting later, like a, another version of this in the future could be wait for change approval in ServiceNow before continuing. Um, which could potentially build off of the, um, you know, wait for merge request approval before continuing. It could be a similar feature or another option for that, mm -hmm. where a pipeline will wait for a merge request approval of some merge request, sorry, uh, ServiceNow ticket um, before proceeding with the rest. But um, then we're starting to get into maybe something we don't necessarily want to build, although we may need to because certain enterprises work in that way and they have policies that they're using ServiceNow. And, um, so it's sort of complicated, but that, that's, that's what this represents. At yeah. the moment, though, just audit, create, making sure that GitLab is sending audit events, essentially, into ServiceNow is a good start. Yeah, I think it makes sense to like open up the API to make it easy to, to make that integration and connection for, for uh, those events or, or tying that information together. Yeah. And I agree with you, though. Like it's, a, it's a sticky... Um, balance of how far you want to go with ServiceNow because for, there's other things besides, I know ServiceNow is yeah. a popular one, but there's other things besides ServiceNow that if we're going to do it for ServiceNow, we might want to rip an API for a couple other similar applications. Um, yeah. But maybe, maybe that's the line, right? Maybe you can integrate the information in the events and maybe that's as far as we want to go. But I think it's one of those things where if we go too far, then we're actually pushing a really convoluted flow with multiple different things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, th those are exactly the trade-offs. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it does look like actually they have a REST API uh, for ServiceNow has one. Yep. So you just post post something to create an issue, um, mm -hmm. which you can do with a curl command on the host. Uh, and um, yeah, sh it, so it should be pretty easy to start there. Uh, yeah, agreed. Um, ServiceNow does have a pretty, um, you know, the other thing I remember, and I, you know, I don't want to go too far on this, but I do remember now that ServiceNow, there might be a licensing issue with some of this integration that customers stray away from it sometimes. 
like there needs to be an account for like the a, yeah like you can't have a general account there's a cost per license um yeah. so maybe that's a factor we need to think about could be could yeah. be um okay i don't hear too much about this issue um yeah and i think what happens is like my experience when we've uh when i was in the enterprise side is that this was always brought up for other applications as well um a lot of times people say, you know what, not worth it because we might actually lean into another application in the future. Um, yeah, and, and I think people just very quickly, um, they just write something that does the curl command and move on and we never hear from them again. Exactly, exactly. And it, the, it comes up like during the uh, initial discussions and they're like, oh, you don't have a way to do this that's built in. Yeah. Um, and then so there's a conversation then, but then yeah, they find the curl command and then we never hear it again. Yeah, I would I would ex I would expect that the bigger priority here is building out on that um, compliance and security persona from a release perspective. Yeah, okay. evidence collection is is an yeah. awesome feature. Yeah, um, because no other tools really have access to all the information that we have, uh, and we can tie it all together and just bundle it and show it in that change dashboard about what was involved in the change that went out. Nobody else can really do that. It's a really really unique unique feature. Yeah, and I think that the other thing, you know, like just thinking on beyond, like once we get to uh, some stabilization in some of that, um, uh, you know, event uh, reporting is um, also, like I would mentioned in the change log, it's like there's opportunities to do some really cool stuff that is exciting for security or people who are responsible for, you know, being able to take an immediate action. Like, okay, yeah. This event caused an issue, and now I'm going to open up a ticket from the event log, you know, or or the event dashboard, or I now need to notify people, and so I can click a notification. You know what I mean? Like just being able to kind of tie in uh, some really cool capabilities that will make the life easier of this security and compliance persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Um, this was pretty straightforward. There is some work to do, and I think that there is some low-hanging fruit that we should try to get through um, in Q3. So um, there's actually still some more things here too that we should talk about. Oh, there um, is. Oh, I didn't yeah. see. Sorry. No problem. Um, so the access controls for environments is something that's requested by our own delivery team. Yep. Um, it's something that we can investigate. Um, features of interest and ongoing efforts to support both came from our compliance team. These are features that are internal compliance team said that they were interested in building on. Um, and it's, again, the same three, um, the releases page, having that be tied to milestones, collecting all the evidence, um, doing the approval jobs uh, is going to help. And then these are actually internal efforts um, that uh, our compliance team is doing that we can potentially build features to support them in, and they can dog food the feature. So those are good to look at. There's also this epic for locking down the path to production, which is really interesting. Um, and then blackout periods. Blackout periods are blackout periods. I won't dive into that, but this one is is interesting. No, I mean, this, is, this is a key DevOps like visionary uh, place to be, right? Like, so when you think about when we talk about DevOps, like some of your really really mature teams are, yeah, locking a path down. No one has the path. Like, it's so automated that you just deploy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so there's a bunch of issues in here, uh, and this issue needs some serious grooming uh, to, to clean it up, uh, but um, it has a bunch of issues linked in here that do things like make it so that nobody can edit the GitLab CI YAML except for admins, um, locking down the runners so that more things are controlled, um, signatures um, for evidence collection or for binary authorization, uh, locking the cluster so compliant builds are executed. Um, yeah, a quick question on that. So um, one of the things I'm just trying to make sure I understand um, when we talk about like the YAML um, lockdown, for example, uh, mm -hmm. we kind of create this permissions uh, piece around projects and groups. Um, but I don't think we've really fully matured the user level permissions. Is that correct? Mm, yeah, uh, I think that's probably a fair statement uh, that um, permit we have uh, it, it's, it's on the manage team. So I'm not as familiar with the issues, mm -hmm. um, but I think that there is a decent number of requests out there to make permissions more flexible in different ways. Okay. 
which would tie to being able to do some of these capabilities. Yeah, so then you could say you'd have more control over who does the things that we can now let you pick who is allowed to do it. So this is like, this could be a manage uh, release application type kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, of course, the, the, the ability to change a file in source control is going to tie into create, which is the team that manages source control. Um, so a lot of these end up having, and the runners are in uh, verify on the runner team. So um, a, lot of, a lot of the things about locking down how a deployment happens inside of GitLab, um, it's part of a release category, but it requires building features across, across GitLab in different ways. There's a lot of ways you can do things in GitLab. It's very flexible, and locking it down um, is uh, is complicated, but doable. Yeah, it can be a complex workflow, and when you think about just you know, you, it has to be thoughtful, right? Like yeah. we can be iterative, but we just also have to be in our iterative, um, you know, validating the experience as a whole. Because when you get into release orchestration plus release governance. And you know, just the whole process, like you can counter some actions there, and so you just have to be really, or you can become counterproductive in the process. So that's for sure. <laughs> you can lock people down to the point that nobody can do anything anymore. Right, but, exactly. Um, or I don't even know why I'm stuck. <laughs> exactly. okay. Yeah, so it's, it's complicated. But I think there's some pretty clear areas to start. Um, uh, yeah. So so hopefully that helps. It does. It helps a lot. Great. Shall we stop recording? Yes. Uh, there. Getting there. <laughs>